I'm basing all my comments and my stories on 22 years of helping the world come and set up in India. All those dots that you see on the world map are the 78 nationalities that we have had the privilege of working with, whether it is IKEA, who comes from Sweden, Hyundai, who comes from Korea, America, Amazon, and all these companies. We've had nationalities from around the world that we've worked with. So the stories of cultural intelligence adapting to them, them adapting to our country, is from that 22-year legacy that we've trained or helped empower global citizens with workshops, Indians to understand the world. So those are the foreigners coming to work with India, right? And the other 2,435 global citizens are the Indians in corporate India that we've gone into and we've helped them to get on with worldwide business etiquette, being a um, global citizen and so on. So we've had opportunities to do work in real time, in real businesses. I discovered the opportunity to start an entrepreneurship, a niche entrepreneurship called Relocation Services, which helps foreign businesses to set up in India. And it was Joanne Grady Husky, the American that you see in that image, who came there as a diplomatic spouse and gave me that idea. What do we do? We have to help with their visas, their FRRO documents, setting up their all their utilities, finding the house, finding the schools for the children. Oh my God, my dog has to go to the right veterinarian. Who's the right vet? Um, how do I handle maids in India? Because I'm used to having coffee and breakfast with my... If ever I could afford a maid, then she would sit and eat coffee and breakfast with me. What do I do in India? So many questions, which seem like from the mundane to the very serious. I have a senior vice president in my company. He's hiring more and more people from his own community. Is this a diversity issue? What's going on? So some will be at that level and some will be at everyday level. And that was the business that we started. And that business gave me a lot of opportunities to go out into the world and welcome businesses to come to India. For example, this was a road show that I did for KPMG with automotive companies telling them, please invest in India. It's m far more sustainable than China. That's my mantra. I go around saying that. It was Aston Martin. This is uh, Ulrich Betz, the CEO of Aston Martin, who uh, was part of the audience. That And you know, so we have an opportunity to tell people, highlighting the positives of doing business in India, never lying about the challenges of doing business in India, because that's not what we are about, but maybe helping circumvent the issues and challenges of how to do business in India. And from those 22 years, what I've learned over time is two things. One, cultural intelligence, which I've put into some books here. One is called Upworldly Mobile. And I'll be happy to leave it for you in your library. And the other, which, which Narayan Murthy was launching in Bangalore, and the foreword of which Sashi Tharoor wrote. And the other book, um, which I'll show you, is Be Make It in India, which I'll leave also in your library. Happy to do that. So I've learned a little bit of cultural adaptation and intelligence and very close to my heart. And because I was on that board, it was not the business board at Harvard, Karishma. It was the women's leadership board. In the uh, Kennedy School of Government in Harvard, there's a women's leadership board. And I was lucky enough to be invited to be the only Indian woman at that time to join the board and work with the dean for the advancement of women and girls at Harvard and beyond. So, learned a lot of things on gender, diversity and inclusion. And then I realized, what am I doing flying 10,000 miles going to Boston to do this? There are many people closer to home and we can take that model and make it more Indian and apply that wisdom to India. And so I took a sabbatical from that and now I spend my life with a foundation. I have a daughter who runs my for-profit business, Global Adjustments is run by Rohini, and I'm able, with a band of 63 lovely teams of admirals, and I'm able to spend time on the foundation helping do good by empowering young Indians with holistic life excellence. What does that mean? It means having cultural intelligence. It means having gender intelligence. It means having emotional intelligence and wisdom and centeredness too. So at this moment in my life, to come back to an IIM-like company, like group, it's awesome. 
So those are the three books. But the first book everybody laughs about doing business in India for dummies. But as you know, the dummy series, it's actually just a very simple format of books that's written. And that's what made, uh, I think made me get into the board at Harvard because people noticed things like that at the time. So why do young Indians matter? That's the question I asked myself driving this morning. And then I thought, I have a client today in Bangalore. His name is Paul Dupuy. If you open the Times of India today, he's been interviewed. And he is the CEO of Randstad. As you know, Randstad is the world's second largest HR company that finds people really good jobs. Is he has said in the interview that tech and touch are always going to go together. Please don't think that just because we become technically so advanced that the human touch is going to ever disappear. Even more than before, the human touch is going to be relevant. It's going to be important that we know how to build relationships with each other across boundaries and borders, as well as with all genders and all diversity. Why gender intelligence? It's understanding that each one is unique. And gender intelligence is, can we treat different genders slightly differently so that we get the best desired result? And that's all it is. So with that in mind, I'm going to just give you three quick stories that I have faced in my personal life, organizational life, and nationally, and which helped me because I think I applied gender intelligence and it helped me to get the outcome that I wanted. So let me tell you the story in level one. So men's brains usually are wired in a way that it has a, uh, you know this, right? A hormone called testosterone, which is fight or flight, let's get to it, let's do the tasks, let's uh, be efficient about it, and let's move on. Whereas women are have more of which chemical? Estrogen is also there, but progesterone. progesterone. But you know the chemical which makes us bond? Yes. Who said that? Price for you. Oxytocin. So oxytocin is what makes us want to share and build and include and, and uh, make, make sure that everybody is included. With this knowledge, if you were to apply it in my life, I had to work with the Germans. See, cultures are also called masculine or feminine cultures, by the way. So the German culture is at a 66 on the Geert Hofstetter model, Hofstetter model. You know that Geert Hofstetter was the guru of uh, intercultural work. And he showed that the German scale is masculine at 66 and India comes up 56, is more feminine as a country. What does that mean? We are more into making sure relationships work over tasks, whereas they are more prone to having achievements, tasks as the centerpiece. So when you look at this, and I had to be in a startup entrepreneurship, I was very keen to win one account of a luxury car segment. Can you guess which one? German? BMW. And the BMW team was coming. And I was this little person, and they were all these six feet, four inches tall Germans. And. Uh, so I realized that they are going to be more interested in task and efficiency, right? Over just building relationships, which is what I'm really good at. So they gave me one hour and 45 minutes and they said the chairman of the board is coming. His name was Norbert at the time. And they said in one hour, 45 minutes, just quickly show him everything about doing business in India and do a tour of Chennai also. In one hour, 45 minutes, 5,000 year old history, I have to tell. And I have to show this and time is crucial for them. So I picked certain things. We went to the Marina Beach, but on the Marina Beach in Chennai, I showed them that there is the Santom Basilica, which is the only three places in the world where a church is built on actually an apostle of Jesus. So Christianity came to India long before it went to Germany. And they were very impressed. Right from there, we went to uh, the Madras Club, which is the heritage home of the East India Company. And you talk about the Raj and the importance of that. And then you, I sat down and explained various aspects of how people didn't just colonialize India. They did colonialize our minds a little bit. And we have a little attitude with saying, yes, sir, 
no sir, three bags full sir, sometimes. And then at other times we'll be fighting and saying 100 times, that's not right, that's not right. We, we can seesaw between this and the other. And that's not because we are rude. It's because our mindset is the way it is, so understand us. So stuff like that. And then we finished the tour and I took him back to the, um, to the Taj. And he actually was um, happy. He didn't want to sit in the BMWs. There were six BMWs lined to bring him. He didn't want to sit there. He sat in the bus with me and said, it's okay, just explain the city. And I said to him, how come you're so down to earth? You're the chairman of the board of BMW. And he said, I've read Ramana Maharishi, who am I? And I've been a yoga practitioner for, since I was 15. Applaud India, seriously. I realized, and he had never been to India before. He was investing in BMW first time in India. I suddenly realized, oh my God, people are the same. And you never know where India's influence has gone. So when we dropped him back at the Taj, I said to him, sir, I was given one hour 45 minutes. Please notice it's one hour 42 minutes now. And you have a good sense of the city and the business. Um, I've been very happy working with you. I hope that you realize that we are professionals too. They hired us after that. Till today, BMW is one of our top company clients. So what did I do? I gave him the efficiency and the task thing. I showed him I was on time. I still did the things that I thought were important to him. And so now the new chairman of the board is Haral Kruger. And last year he came back and they were thinking of investing in China further or India. And he has been convinced that the Modi government is going to be there for the long term. And so they are going to continue to invest in India. That's on the personal level. Just quickly to share with you a story, okay? Let's go to level two. I said I'll give you a story on just checking if you're awake. Yeah, organizational. So on the organizational level, so I leveraged this aspect. So the memory, right? Man's brain, woman's brain. So if you have a man's brain and a woman's brain literally with you, you will notice that the wires on the man's brain will be going from one to the next, to the next, to the next compartment. But in the woman's brain, it'll be zigzagged all over the place. I mean, I'm not lying. This is a neurological thing. You can ask a doctor. At Harvard, they brought us these MRIs of two brains and they showed us. So here are two brains at rest. Rest mode. When the man's brain is at rest, what will happen? Nothing. Totally. <laughs> Woman's brain is at rest, what will happen? <laughs> so I realized that the, my, my client, if he's a man, He's going to have memory, which is a gist of what is happening. He's going to have some low uh, memory and attention spans and intelligent, but no doubt, but that's all he can do. Whereas me, with my memory details and my client who's a woman with the memory details will have a lot of details. Oh, you remember that day ma'am had come and she had spoken at I am. The women will all remember the color of the sari. Men, if you shut your eyes now, you won't know the color of my sari today. <laughs> They will know that when that happened and this conversation happened at that meeting and price was brought up, you remember the expression on that CFO's face? <laughs> Men will just say, the meeting went well. <laughs> so knowing this and knowing that organizationally I wanted to capture the New Zealand delegations that were coming last year and the year before, I found that the Trade Commissioner in Delhi was a woman for the first time, Jane Cunliffe. So I, I knew she was interested in the heritage of India and all of that. So I helped her to set up a tour in South India, staying in a beautiful heritage uh, club instead of a seven star hotel. Um, explained to her that I'd love to have opportunities to work with the delegation because these are the nuances of India, the unpalpable soft power of India that will keep you in the long term in our country. And Jane was quite happy. She's a very strong feminist and um, so she came and actually worked, that's Jane sitting in the middle in my foundation now, working even with all the young girls, underprivileged girls from Nagaland and Tamil Nadu that I brought together to do a workshop. When the New Zealand Prime Minister came, I was invited to come and do the talk for the entire business delegation, which was my desired outcome. So I leveraged the fact that Jane would be interested in a lot of details and a lot of fuzzy communication. But her counterpart, Ralph Hayes, he's in Bombay. He's the trade commissioner in Bombay. What did I want out of Ralph? I wanted him to rent a house from us because in Bombay you have to make money. 
So when I want to be in touch with Ralph Hayes, he's just going to have a gist. He was also there at my speech, but he's not going to remember all these details. How do you communicate with men best? Yeah, send them an email and put on the subject line a very clear one line, which is what is in the email. And just put that. Don't put five other things under that also in the email and expect that everything is going to be um, captured and digested. So with Ralph, I just said, when are you coming? Um, yeah, I do that with my husband. I send him a one-line email. And I say, uh, just the monthly funds for the house. That's all. That email is just that. Because if we do it, we'll try to do the, the we'll connect it all, right? The funds for the house with the tuition for the children, with the dropping of the maid, and, and then it's too much for him to handle. So, um, but in this case with Ralph Hayes, I just sent him an email three months before. When are you coming to India? Will you need help in Bombay? He said, not till March. You know what? I left him alone. Sometimes we have to learn to leave the men alone also because then it's when it's relevant and when it's important and it's coming right up, then you can remind and say, hey, one month to go, Ralph, can I help with housing? We have a great team set up in Bombay. So last month he said, sure, I'm sure you're professional. Please send someone to show me the houses. And last week, we actually clinched the house for Ralph in Bombay. We're delighted. But I wanted to show you the strategic difference that you could do when you're dealing with the other side and you know how the mindset works. Then at the national level, right? So you know this, right? When we are resting, we're completely this buzzing. And when they are resting, they're completely shut down. So when I, have you seen this ever? <laughs> That's the wrong time to have a meaningful, soulful conversation. So what you want to do is wait for the rest is about being quiet. It's about zoning out. And that's the wrong time to say, what are you thinking? <laughs> because they'll say, nothing. <laughs> nothing. You must be thinking about that girl we, we saw no, just now in that grocery shop, that girl. Or maybe he's thinking something. You don't want to tell me, that's why. How can you think nothing? Hey, hey, guys. Girls, the guys can think nothing. Just leave it. <laughs> so that's the wrong time to try to have that conversation. So, but I asked my husband, I want to do something at a national level. I've written a book, Make It in India. I put Modi on the cover. I put Obama on the cover. Oh, what can I do? I want to do something on the national stage. That was the wrong time, right? He was like that. So he didn't say anything to me. But later, later when he was in an engaged mode, all I said is, I really value what you have to say usually. Can you tell me, what do you think? How can I make a difference at a national level? And he had a eureka moment. Once we women get our claws and we know what to do, we just go after it, right? So I had to learn and practice to upplay what I had to offer. And I actually said, you guys are doing a great job of making India, but I can get expats to come and tell other expats about the success of India's story. Wouldn't you like that? Let me come and help you. And then it ended up with Amitabh Kant absolutely appreciating the book and now absolutely involving us in areas where we love to serve the nation. So three times, three stories, and I'm just trying to say what did we do? We strategically did something to work with it. So those are the three. The first lesson in my mind from the first story is, can we understand the strengths and leverage the differences. So it might be your boss who's very different from you. It might be your wife who's very different from you. Leverage the differences. If both of us were the same, how boring life would be. The other is, in the second story, I think the strategy gave me the best outcome for Ralph and Jane. So I'm sure in your own lives, you'll be able to think about that. Strategic. So strategize for the best outcome. And the last is, you know, each of you has your own expertise. Nobody else can do as well the thing that you do. Please believe in that. Man or woman doesn't matter. And confidently bet on that expertise. And then the world is your oyster. <laughs>